Okay, so the project manager, contract administrator, who are they going to talk to? The other project manager for STAR, uh, the University of Greenwich design team, and the project team, so the contractor, the subcontractors. The methods they'll use again, oral, written, so telephone in, meetings, letters, emails, uh, scheduled meetings, and information required back from them in progress reports. Frequency. The other project managers, the project managers, so will meet on a weekly basis or they will have a phone call chat whenever a problem arises. University design team, weekly basis, fortnightly meetings for progress reports, and the project team, weekly basis, uh, fortnightly um, for meetings and for, again, progress reports. So the easiest way to do all of this is have a communication plan. So this includes a project directory, which we have an example of in a minute, a description of what communication should pass between who and when, um, how decisions are made, uh, problem resolution procedures, meetings, um, when meetings are, who to uh, send reports to, and when these sort of things are, are needed. And this is a brief uh, directory. So you have your for example, your team member, your project manager, the mobile or phone number, email, method to be used, so the email all day, call between work hours 8 to 5, to go home run as well. Reporting, he reports to the client, uh, and the meetings which everyone here, as you can see, attends on what date. Uh, so if I was to take subcontractor number three, um, they send reports to teams one, two, and the project managers. So they send all their information to everyone and the project managers. <clears throat> the health and safety executive, right? These people are going to need to be, uh, the same as the other guys, all need to be, sort of be mitigated from uh, risk and all this sort of stuff by the communication methods. So the way you communicate with the health and safety executive is they'll be contacted by the contractor in the initial instance to notify them of the works. Um, you can invite them on site visits, you can send reports of injuries if it's necessary, um, and the CDM regulator um, to be the main point of contact. So make sure that you have a CDM regulator because straight away that takes all that pressure off of you and gives it to one person to deal with. So then they are then responsible for reporting to the HSC and enforcing obviously the CDM regulations. So they then take on all the risk. Brian, uh, Brian is quite um, a big one. Uh, so project managers will have to communicate constantly with Brian because we want a good Brian rating for this site. Uh, do it through reports, e.g., design tech document, building users guide at the end, meetings, uh, invite site visits, and appoint again appoint a Brian representative to assume all responsibilities for it. So then it takes the pressure off. They then deal with it. Um, Brian likes to look at not only the efficiency of the building, the energy efficiency, but the way that you engage everybody. So the design of 10 document um, has to be approved by all your stakeholders before you can get your feedback. So it's got to be approved by everybody before you can even start. Your building user guide is for the general public and the end users at the end of uh, the construction phase to know how exactly to use the building and use its facilities. So these are each credits that go towards your Brian rating that you need to achieve anyway. So you need to be engaging with your stakeholders. Another way of doing this is through an open doors weekend. The university had one in November at Stockholm Street um, and it basically Anyone can book on to have an attend a site visit. Explain to the modern construction processes, so sustainable development, and what was going on at the site, what it was going to be used for, um, and it involved the public and it educated them into sustainable construction. Uh, so it took the general public as a stakeholder and anyone else that wanted in to attend as a stakeholder and straight away showed them what was happening at the site. And it's a great way of instantly communicating um, what is conveying sorry, what's going to happen there. And there's another one in uh, 2015 in March, but it won't be at Stockholm Street, it'll be at a different location. So in conclusion, 
Good communication strategies will lead to good management. Uh, it's important to give only relevant information in an appropriate language. So your stakeholders, don't send them all legal jargon, which you would send to your solicitor or your project manager. Keep it simple. Keep things on a need to know basis. Sometimes for some people that basis is not is that they don't need to know. So relevant information, keep it for the people that need to know. It's important to have a good organisation structure, not too tall so communication takes ages and not too flat that you can't communicate with everybody. And it's important to follow the structure and procedure. Right, so this is the structure that's already in place on Stockwell Street. So if my subcontractor had a problem, it's important that he follows the structure and procedure. He doesn't skip straight to the project manager. He talks to his contractor, then the contractor can raise a message up. It has to follow a neat structure, otherwise it will just be chaos. People will be talking to people that they don't need to know. So they need to follow the correct channels and the correct procedures, otherwise it won't work. So thank you very much.